Okay, so back for part E. In part E, we are told that um, the student has now uh, checked the work, corrected the mistakes, and derived the correct expression for the function E of R, and the student now wants to find the charge density uh, rho of R, okay, from a correct E of R. So, uh, how, and you're supposed to explain how to do this. And the important thing is don't actually, well, don't, they don't give you an E of R, so you can't actually derive a row of R. You have to be able to explain how to get it. So uh, the way I would explain this is to say the intermediate step we're going to go through, um, we're going to say here, let's say here's our sphere, okay? And uh, we have electric field as a function of R. We're going to basically say, let's put a Gaussian surface, which is a sphere of radius R, radius little r, somewhere inside, some arbitrary is little r, we know that uh, the electric field is going to point outward everywhere, okay? So E r is going to be uniform on a Gaussian sphere of radius r, and we're going to use that to find what the enclosed charge must be in terms of r. So the, the schematically how we're going to do this, let me, I'll do this in green, I'll do it up here. We're going to start with E as a function of R. We're going to use that to find what the enclosed charge in a Gaussian surface of radius R is as a function of R. And then we're going to see, oh, how do we use that to find rho as a function of R? Okay, so uh, this, what I've drawn here is sort of the first step, okay? Now what we can say is uh, by Gauss's law, okay, this E of R points, points outward everywhere, okay, so uh, the flux is going to be uh, Q enclosed as a function of R over epsilon naught, okay, and flux is uh, the integral of E dot n hat dA over the surface of the sphere, of the Gaussian sphere, okay? So that's the flux, and that's going to be Q enclosed over epsilon naught, Q enclosed being a function of R, okay? It varies as you change little r, of course. Okay, so uh, what that becomes, so let me actually, so I'll take this all the way up to here, and the integral on the left-hand side becomes uh, integral of E dA because uh, E is parallel to n hat everywhere, okay? So integral of E dA, and that's going to equal Q enclosed function of R over epsilon naught. Boy, this draws a lot nicer than blackboard. Uh, it's much smoother. Okay, so uh, Integrating dA, since E is constant everywhere, we can basically say this is going to be E times 4 pi r squared. Okay, That's what you're going to get when you integrate dA. You just get the area of the sphere times E because E is a constant over the surface of the sphere. Okay, Equals Q enclosed function of r over epsilon naught. So now what we get is Q enclosed is going to be... Uh, Oh, sorry, let me, uh, do, 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 do. Q enclosed as a function of R is going to be 4 pi R squared epsilon naught, okay, times E. And if you want to uh, simplify that a little, you could say, well, 4 pi over epsilon, or 4 pi times epsilon naught is actually K, okay? Um, I'm going to leave that out here, okay? Uh, so what this gives us now is the enclosed charge. Oh, sorry, charge has an e in it within uh, radius r of the center. Okay, so and this, if I were doing this test, I would probably circle that as an intermediate step. Because that's something I I can 
I don't know a way to solve this problem without going through this this process. Okay, so um, I would say if I were a grader, I would be looking for that intermediate step of finding Q enclosed. Okay, and that would be worth some partial credit number of points, some some well defined partial credit number of points. Okay. Um, so the, the general rule, obviously, you're not going to get this exact question, or they wouldn't have given this as a sample question. But the, as a general rule, what you should do um, is, if you have sort of a, what you think is sort of a well-defined intermediate result, um, not well I don't know how to put it, but if you get a good intermediate result, make sure it's clear what that is so that they can give you partial credit. On these tests, so often it's about giving them excuses to give you partial credit, okay? Giving the graders excuses to say, okay, clearly this person knows something of what they're doing because they got to this point. Okay, so now I got to admit from this point on, it gets pretty hard um, to find the Q and close or to find a relationship between Q and close and rho of R. What you do is you look at, here's a sphere of radius little r, okay, and basically say you have a shell of thickness dr, okay, so you go here, this thickness is dr, and the radius of this is r. I'm not drawing it very well, but I hope you get the idea. Okay. So what's the volume of this shell? So actually, let me let me go this way and say the charge in that shell within the thickness of that shell is going to be rho, which is a function of r, times uh, d vol. Okay. I'm writing d vol because otherwise I'd be writing dv, which is voltage. Okay. So I'm using vol for volume. Okay, so what's the volume? And what I mean is, what's the volume of the material of this shell? Okay, the stuff I'm sort of very lightly hashing in here. Okay, what's the volume of the material of this shell? Not the volume enclosed in the center of it, but just the volume of within the thickness of the shell. Well, that's going to be the surface area of the shell. Okay, so d vol is going to be the surface area of the shell, which is 4 pi r squared times its thickness, which is dr. Okay, so now what you get is dq, and this is going to be dq enclosed, okay, is going to be uh, 4 pi r squared rho as a function of r dr, okay? And then, boy, now, <laughs> um, what you can do here then is throw an integral on both sides, okay? So you integrate uh, and say we're going to do that, right? And we're integrating dr on one side. So we're integrating uh, from, I suppose you'd say we're integrating from the center of the shell to there, okay? But see, the thing is now, um, this gets hard. Um, the, the best thing I can think of, geez, um, the best thing I can think of to do, so, um, yeah, you want to integrate, so, anyway, from r equals zero to r, this is, this is really, guys, this is hard, okay? So, the left-hand side integrates to q enclosed, as a function of r. The right-hand side, um, so what I would actually do is say, rather than integrating here, I would, oh gosh, I would almost take away the integrals. Let's see how this works and divide the dr, oh, I see. You divide the dr over, and you get dq enclosed dr equals, Jesus, can you do this? Oh, what you have to do, okay, yeah, one more time. Um, you have to bring all the r's to the right-hand side if you want to do this. So I would go 1 over 4 pi r squared, um, d 
Jeez. I'm sorry, I had in my head how to do this. So I think you go DQ and closed DR equals row of R? Yeah, that's what it has to be. Okay, right, right. So, um, holy crap. Okay, so you could say rho as a function of r is 1 over 4 pi r squared, and then you'd be taking d over dr of q enclosed, which is this up here, okay? d over dr of 4 pi r squared epsilon naught e, okay, and uh, e, and e is a function of r here, okay, and then I, the best thing I can say there, the only simplification I can see is to cancel the four pi's. You have a four pi inside the derivative, you have a four pi outside, those are constants. So what you'll get then is rho as a function of r equals one over r squared d over dr of, oh, and you're going to have the, the epsilon naught can pop out too. So maybe what I'll do is I will go and uh, epsilon naught over r squared d over dr of r squared e as a function of r. Okay. That is, I mean, that's about as close as I can see, and that's about as neat an answer as I can see. Um, so here's the thing. First of all, this is part E. So remember that out of five questions, this was freaking hard, okay? And out of the five parts of this, um, you do not have to get all five parts right to get a five or to get, you know, enough for this problem to get you to a five on the exam, okay? Um, there is no freaking way they're expecting people to do this. They probably put this on as the super hard thing for the, you know, the super geniuses to show off with, okay? Um, I wouldn't worry about it if you can't get this. What I would try to do, first of all, I would make sure you, you are certain you have the other four parts correct, A through D. And then on this part, what I would have done, my strategy would have been show them this, show them this idea that you're going from E to Q enclosed to rho, and then find what Q enclosed has to be in terms of E, okay, through Gauss's law, because that wasn't hard, right? That was just a straightforward application of Gauss's law. And then, then only if you have extra time, go and show the details. But if you were to tell them this in green and then do the blue stuff, you know, if I were grading, I would say, yeah, that's pretty good. I would give you at least two-thirds of the points for part E, okay? Um, so, again, I, I'm sh I showed you the answer to this because they asked, but, boy, um, if you, if you get through all five parts of this question and you got it all right, or if this were a question for you and you got it all right, you got all five parts of this question, you could probably just like crumple up the paper and not even turn in the other problem and still get a five. I wouldn't do it, but I'm just saying, this, <laughs> this is really freaking hard. Okay, there you go. Uh, let's see. 